Good afternoon. I'm Matt Anstead, and I lead the business development activities for Fluidime mass cytometry platforms in the Midwest region. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and I'd like to thank the University of Chicago and the University of Illinois Chicago and their respective CITOF core leaders, David Leclerc and Balaji Ganesh, for inviting us to provide this seminar to the Chicago research community. And again, thank you all for attending. Uh, I'm joined today by my colleague, Vinicius Mata, who is a staff scientist with expertise in mass cytometry. Vinicius will be presenting on a number of topics uh, related to mass cytometry, including an overview of the Fluidime Helios Cytoff system, uh, application of the immune profiling assay, MaxPAR Direct, to quantify 37 immune cell populations, uh, also on approaches to minimizing technical variation in batch effects uh, by applying uh, barcoding, uh, and ways in which mass cytometry can be used uh, to enable highly reproducible results. All attendees will be muted uh, during the presentation, um, and following the presentation, I'll, we, I will moderate a Q&A session uh, using the GoTo uh, questions chat window uh, to the right of your screen. Um, if you have any difficulty with audio or video uh, during the presentation, or you'd like to submit a question uh, during the presentation, please use the uh, chat window uh, and we'll work to resolve any issues. I'll now turn it over to Vinicius for his presentation. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction. And good morning again, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Uh, today's seminar will feature the power of mass cytometry in single cell biology, as Matt mentioned. Uh, I know what uh, I touted the webinar advances in mass cytometry, but I think this presentation will indeed feature many advances in mass cytometry that will illustrate the power of mass cytometry in single cell biology. So again, uh, my name is Vinicius Mota. I'm a field application specialist of Fluidime, supporting the Midwest, United States, and also East Canada. So the next slide, I would like to start the seminar by highlighting the complex and heterogeneous in biological system as we are well aware of. So cells express a complex array of proteins that indicate physiologic status, uh, oops, it's going, Okay, uh, expressing uh, different phenotypes and functions. Therefore, platforms that provide multi-parametric protein analysis at the single cell level are most useful for studying cell biology, which measures the breadth and depth of biological systems with single cell resolution. If you take the immune system as an example, many cell types exist with different morphology and function in the body. They interact with each other to provide efficient immune response against microorganisms, response to cancer, but when malfunction can lead to autoimmune reactions or susceptibility to infections. Characterizing phenotype in these various cell types is crucial to understand the immune system in health and disease. Also to develop new therapeutics or make more personalized and efficient treatments. So uh, many cell types have been characterized over the past 20, 30 years using conventional flow and acetometry flow. Although some cell, some cell types can be morphologically distinct, cells with similar morphology have different functions and they also express different cell face marks. Identification of these major immune cell types requires an average of seven to 10 unique markers or more to be characterized. In addition to phenotype cell populations by the expression of surface markers, we need to investigate their function as the same cell type exert different functions in response to viral infections, to tumor, or when maintaining tissue homeostasis. This requires large antibody panels with many more markers in order to better characterize the cell function, signaling network, cell uh, cycle status, and also cytokine production. In fluorescent flow, there is a limitation in the number of markers that can be used simultaneously due to the broad emission spectrum and overlap of fluorochromes. Limitations in this number of markers in fluorescent antibody panel has led research traditionally to focus on studying the biology of few major cell types, for instance, CD8 T cells, Treg, dendritic cells, 
or myeloid cells in their research program. Limitation on clinical samples also prevents the use of multiple antibody panels for a broader immune phenotyping approach. Mass cytometry overcomes this challenge by allowing the study of more than 50 parameters simultaneously and million of cells, or million of cells. This has allowed the discovery of new biology and more comprehensive functional profiling in many research areas, like basic research, drug discovery, and clinical research. This has been possible because the antibodies now are conjugated with metal isotopes instead of fluorochromes. The quantification of these metal tags are achieved with a high resolution mass spectrometry. More importantly, conjugation of antibodies with metal isotopes does not change the biology of the antibody and the staining procedure is very similar to conventional flow. There is no need for major modification in your current protocol and workflow to label cells in suspension. So you can easily get started in mass cytometry. In addition, the data output is a conventional FCS file that can be analyzed in any third-party software that recognizes FCS file. So in this slide shows this slide shows the mass range of the Helios mass cytometer and the intensity of each metal tag is detecting the system. As you, you can see, two important features when measuring metal tags using mass spectrometry. Discrete peaks with negligible overlap of the metal isotope, uh, metal isotope uh, tags, and also with similar intensity by which each metal is detecting the system. This allows for many more markers to be measured simultaneously with minimal overlap. It provides more flexibility to build, edit, and switch markers around in a high parameter antibody panel as the metal intensity is also very similar intensity. In addition, there is no need for single stain controls on serving cells and reagents. So I'm also excited to share the addition of seven cadmium isotopes to our portfolio for antibody labeling and expansion of cytop panels. The cadmium isotopes are available in seven different metal isotopes, uh, 106, 110, 111, 112, 113, 14, and 16. The seven new cadmium metal isotopes allows you to expand your antibody panel from 37 to up to 44 markers using commercial reagents. In addition, you can have life and death indicator as well as cell ID reagent, which allows the analysis of more than 50 parameters simultaneously on single cells. So I won't spend much time on this slide, but wanted to give you an overview how mass cytometry works for those that aren't familiar with the technology. So labeled cells are introduced into the instrument in suspension. Aerosol droplets are formed and direct into the plasma, where the cells are vaporized, atomized, and ionized. Low mass ion, um, ions are removed in the high-pass ion optic filter, result in uh, ions enriched for the probe isotope you use for the antibodies. The ion cloud then enters the time of flight chamber where the probes are separate on the basis of their mass. One single unique detector in the instrument, I'm sorry, it's advanced by itself, one single detector in the instrument quantifies all the metal isotopes in the sample, and in mass cytometry, this only single detect, sorry, and in mass cytometry, there will be only one single detector that needs to be calibrated, which minimizes day-to-day and site-to-site -site variation and generates more reproducible results, as I will discuss later in this presentation. Finally, the data matrix is converted into a conventional FCS file. So where has mass cytometry led us over the years and how has it been used and in which research areas? A breakdown of publications that feature mass cytometry and the areas of study is shown on, on the left here. Much of the research comes from the fields of immune oncology, 
oncology, and basic immunology, but also extends to stem cell biology and neuroscience, infectious disease, and also data analysis approach. The graph on the right shows the distribution of panel size used in these studies. A third of mass cytometry published panels were in the teens to 30 markers range. Over half of these studies used panels of 31 markers or more. If you consider, uh, if you consider the panels with more than 21 markers, it comprises more than 80% of the mass cytometry publications. Overall, based on the breadth of the literature available, mass cytometry has diverse applications and great flexibility in the number of markers that can be used, attesting how easy it is to run high parameter panels in mass cytometry. Next, I wanted to show this mass cytometry publication ramp over the years, which speaks for itself. Mass cytometry use is growing quickly. Not only publication is on the rise with more than 900 publications, but cytop technology is also being used, adopted widely by cancer centers in both North America and Europe. Why is cytop on the rise year after year? So experiments a single tubes, and there is no need for stain, single stain controls. Consider you have a tumor biopsy, for example, of about a million cells. The only thing you need to do is to add your 37 to 44 antibody panel mix to your sample, perform the washes, and acquire a single tube. The data you get, the data you have, there is no need for post acquisition correction, or compensation. Mass cytometry antibodies and tags are more robust than fluorescent tags as well. So cocktails and labeled cells can be frozen. And many published protocols and methods are available include guides to data analysis. There is also growing adoption of mass cytometry in clinical trials. As of July 2020, there were 85 ongoing trials citing mass cytometry as a readout with the bulk of these trials using mass cytometry for phase one or phase two clinical research. 16 trials using mass cytometry have been concluded. And this information has been sourced from clinicaltrials.gov. Why is cytop well suited for using clinical trials? Well, it captures the most information per cell, per cell per sample. It's also proven site-to-site -site reproducibility, as I'll discuss later. There are stable and robust antibody tags. The sample barcoding can also improve data quality. And together with the MaxPa direct immune profiling system, so perform best-in-class immune monitoring approach. So here is actually a real-world comparison of flow and mass cytometry recently demonstrated on a poster from the University of Rochester, actually at the site of 2019. To summarize, the authors found it comparatively easier to design a 32 market panel for mass cytometry compared to flow. This example, cost to run the mass cytometry experiment was actually cheaper than flow cytometry. And it was also easier to design and validate in mass cytometry. The lack of spillover in mass cytometry allows the titration of 10 to 12 antibodies in the same tube. So if you're titrating 30 antibodies in flow cytometry, you would need around 120 tubes, considering four titration points, and of course, lots of cells. In mass cytometry, three tubes with 10 antibodies each would require only 12 tubes and much less cells to validate your third market panel. Um, <clears throat> in this other publication, uh, they discuss the use of mass cytometry as a potential redoubt in clinical research. Yadal et al. compare a single tube 40 marker mass cytometry panel with a multi-tube eight color flow cytometry workflow on human PBNC and dissociated tumors. Their key finds show a statistical congruence in the populations using both approaches. Both methods also show comparable staining quality and signal intensities. The authors 
emphasize the ability of mass spectrometry to identify phenotypic functional and exhaustion markers in a unique manner as an advantage over multi-tube workflow. The authors also point to mass spectrometry superiority in the discovery of new biomarkers and for getting the most information from limit and pressure sample as tumor biopsies. So let's now discuss a little bit about the simplicity of cytos. In this session, I will discuss how the Helios mass cytometry is actually a straightforward instrument for daily use. So this slide shows the simple and straightforward workflow for initializing the Helios for daily use. This system warms up for about 30 minutes. Next, an automated daily QC and system optimization. At this point, the system is now ready for sample acquisition. Note that there is no assay-specific optimization steps prior to the sample acquisition. Once the instrument is optimized, any cell type or tissue sample can be acquired using the same configuration. So if you quickly compare fluorescence versus mass cytometry, and here you see an example of the emission spectra for a violet laser excited dyes in a 20 color flow cytometry panel. As we know, there is significant overlap between emission spectra of fluorescent tags. This overlap reduces overall sensitivity in the channels it occurs, requires multiple control tubes of samples, make it difficult to use over 20 fluorochromes routinely, or to change your panel later, and requires more interact interaction when building high parameter panel than more mass cytometry. Fluorescent cytometry signals are also impacted by autofluorescence. In addition, compensation and spectrum mixing is affected by instrument configuration, setting, as well as the use of appropriated single stain controls. In contrast, Helios has 135 truly distinct channels for signal detection, which makes high parameter panel quite easy to build and as compared to flow cytometry. Assay specific optimization and compensation are not needed in mass cytometry. Let's take a look at an example of a 22 marker surface immunophenotype panel in mass cytometry and flow cytometry. The left-hand column on the table shows the markers, while the two columns next to the markers show the corresponding metal tags in the middle column and the fluorochromes in the right column. Please note that the mass cytometry panel, we are only using half of the available, available metals that can be incorporated in a mass cytometry panel. The graph to the left identifies the major uh, cell populations identified by either panel. So here's an example of a fuel over matrix for the Cytec Aurora panel for the fluorochromes chosen for the panel in the previous slide. This matrix was created using the Cytec on full spectrum viewer at the spectrum.cytecview.com. It does illustrate the care needed in placing high and low expression markers in certain channels, right? This process is challenging and leads to highly iter iterative and restrictive panel design. Note that, the mark, the, note that the more markers you add to the panel, more complex it gets. Suppose you had 18, let's say you have an 18 uh, marker panel that's already optimized and now wants to add four to six additional markers. These new markers you add will you interact here, will you interact with all the previous markers in the panel in a way that may require you to redesign your original panel. In contrast, we don't observe the same in mass cytometry. Adding more markers to an existing panel uh, doesn't increase complexity. In this example, we create a mass cytometry panel with the same assumption of equal expression of all markers in all metal channels. Note that there is little to no spillover uh, between metal chains. 
For this reason, compensation is not necessary for mass cytometry panel. Spills in mass, sorry, spillover in mass cytometry is predictable and constant, as well as independent of instrument settings and sample type. This allows not only for either initial panel design, but also the freedom to modify an existing panel without the need to start from scratch, which is often the case with flow cytometry panels. Again, if you have about an 18 marker panel and want it to add four to six markers, the new markers will not interact with the new, uh, the old markers in the panel. Therefore, adding more markers to existing site of panel is easy, and you only need to take in consideration the signal spillover between the new markers you are adding, and not the entire panel. So now I want to discuss why mass cytometer has proven to be the most capable high-parameter cytometer available. So if you think about the lower dimensional fluorescent cytometer of 15 or so parameter enables a broad range of applications. However, an evaluation of the seven optimized multicolor immune phenotype panels, or OMIPs as it's known, with 20 to 30 markers show that the predominant application is surface phenotyping and in some cases, few intracellular markers for phenotyping of function such as cytokine, cell death, and apoptose have been included. The exact technical reason for this is unclear. However, for mass cytometry, the range of proven application is quite a bit broader. For example, in addition to the range of markers established in flow cytometry, OMIP panels, mass cytometry has enough open channels to allow combination of broad phenotyping along with other applications such as signaling, cell cycle, epigenetics, and tetramy studies. In fact, multiple publications using mass cytometry with barcoded tetramers has enabled the investigation of hundreds of epitopes simultaneously in a single tube of staining. As shown in the image here from Gonzalez et al. in cell reports, mass cytometry, uh, <coughs> sorry, as shown in the image here from Gonzalez, the mass cytometry allow assessment of not only surface phenotyping and functional molecules, but a large number of intracellular and intranuclear signaling molecules, all in a single tube of digest ovarian tumor sample. There is an extensive bibliography of papers using mass cytometry for similar analysis. The very limited number of publications using high parameter flow cytometry incorporating signaling, cell cycle, or histone staining show that it's much more challenging to perform these kinds of functional analysis by fluorescence. Probably due to the increase in autofluorescence cells undergo during the harsh staining conditions required, or perhaps certain fluorocombs are sensitive to fixation. One of the major strengths of metal label antibodies and other metal tags is that they are robust. Unlike many fluorochromes, metal tags are resistant to harsh staining conditions such as methanol permeabilization, do not photobleach, fall apart, or interfere with each other. Labeled cells can also be frozen and stored at minus 80 with little to no impact in staining quality. Freedime also offers 42 metal available in kits to easily label antibodies of your choice. And finally, the barcode option. Mass cytometry is the only high parameter cytometry platform which enables barcoding. Freedime's barcoding kit allows the stain of up to 20 samples, each with a unique three digit palladium code to be stained. The barcoded samples are then combined in a single tube, processed, and acquired as a single sample. The single barcoded FCS file is then debarcoded with the CITOF software to create single FCS files for each original sample. Barcoding is a unique and highly valuable application that eliminates tube-to-tube -tube variability when staining, uh, reduce reagent use, 
and saves time during both sample preparation and acquisition and enables better cell discrimination as well. So the fluidine palladium barcode kit requires cells to be fixed first before staining. However, some surface markers can be sensitive to fixation and not compatible with the palladium barcoding kit. So I'm happy to announce that fluidine is now selling anti-human CD45 cadmium label antibody that can be purchased individually and freely combined to create a barcode scheme that can be used to barcode live cells instead of fixed cells with the palladium kit. Last week at the site of 2020 um, virtual meeting, Fluidime presented a poster showing the application of using anti-human D45 antibodies conjugated to the seven cadmium isotope in a seven choose three combination scheme. This generates 35 unique codes used to stain 35 samples which were multiplexed in a single tube to perform uh, the surface staining with a single antibody mix. So all samples were stained, washed, and acquired in a single tube, and a single FCS file is generated that will be debacled. Therefore, all your data for 35 samples is stored in a single FCS file that can be easily shared with collaborators and also to re provide reproducible research. So let's discuss now the array of reagents that's available and antibody options from Fluidine. So reagents are one of Fluidine's tool for us to streamline and standardize our analysis, right? So first, Fluidine sells a total of 22 panel kits, many of which are designed to be combined together to create larger panels. The range of applications covered by this panel is shown in the table on the right and includes general immunophenotyping, more target phenotype of certain cell types such as T cells, B cells, myeloid cells, as well as, sorry, as well as functional panels for cytokine signaling molecules and cell cycle analysis. There are also panels devoted to checkpoint markers as well as in-depth uh, immune monitoring. Fluidime also offers a large catalog containing more than 750 pre-conjugate antibodies as well as labeling kits with, uh, with 44 metal isotopes to conjugate your antibody of interest. Our customer conjugation service allow our in-house uh, allow our in-house experts to label antibodies for you if you prefer. And also, uh, Freedime, Leslie Freedime's panel design choose an excellent aid in designing or modifying your mass cytometry panel. So I would like now to discuss in more detail one of our pre-designed panel kit, which is actually a single tube dry antibody format available for human immunomonitoring, the MaxPa Direct Immune Profiling Kit which is easy, flexible, and comprehensive. Profiling the human immune system is a key application using translational and clinical research to look for biomarkers of disease or response to therapy. Fluidine has created the MaxPa Direct Immune Profiling System, launched last year, which was also named the best new cell biology product of 2019 by the Life Science Industry Award. The MaxPa Direct Immune Profiling System is a truly revolutionary approach to immune monitoring and is absolutely unique in the cytometry market. The system consists of a dry 30 market panel in single tube plus reagents needed to process either PMMCs or whole blood. And also there is an automated data analysis software solution called the MaxPa Path Setter, which identifies and quantifies 37 immune cell population in as little as five minutes. Before launching the MaxPa Direct Immune Profiling Kit, or as we call MDIPA, 
free dime conducts a final and very important test to compare the reproducibility between the sites. So when the same whole blood and TDMC sample were stained in quadruplicate by a single technician at each site and collect on the site in Helios instrument. So six different technicians, six different instruments, six different sites with the same PDMC sample and the same whole blood donor is staying and acquired. Uh, three sites were sent samples in week one and three additional sites were sent samples in week two. All sites received the detailed protocol for sample preparation, of course, instrument data acquisition template and instructions for data acquisition of the HIDU system. All the data was analyzed and used the past set of software. And just want to mention that the PBMC sample at site six, week two, was not processed according to the protocol, so it was not included in the analysis. So a peer review publication in Cytometry B detailed this multi-site reproducibility study of the MaxPAR direct immune profiling assay coupled with the past set of software. Analysis was performed with the MaxPAR, the past set of software, to enumerate cell population frequency. Key finds in the paper show a high degree of reproducibility for the cell population frequencies identified in PBMC and whole blood. This was found for both the intra-site reproducibility, 8% or less CV, and inter-site reproducibility with 18 or less CV results. These finds affirm that the MaxPA direct immune profiling assay is a convenient and reliable solution for deep immune profiling at any institution and across multiple sites. All the raw data is available in Cytobank if you wish to explore the results on your own. So how you can meet your research needs with Cytoff and MaxPA direct immune profiling system in clinical trials and longitudinal immune profiling. MDIPA assay is a 30 market dry antibody panel ready to use in a single tube. Important this assay is also customizable with 14 additional markers that can be added on the top of the 30 existing markers. It's very well suited for being used with pressure samples. It's easy, cost effective and efficient approach to perform immune monitoring across multiple uh, sites. Analysis with the past set of software removes all the analytical bias and need for expert gaining and provides results in just as five minutes. It's ideal to be used in multi site studies with proven consistency or lot to lot, run to run, and site to site. And sample stain of the MaxPAR direct immune profiling assay can be frozen and stored for later analysis or shipped to another location without having any significant impact on the data quality. So thus, this assay has not only been proven to provide robust data in multiple site trials, but also simplifies the logistics uh, surrounding the collection, staining, analysis, and of samples involved in large trials. This is because the center participating in these trials do not even require to own a dedicated CITOF instrument, as all they would need is to do is acquire uh, the kit and then collect fresh samples from the patients, readily stain these samples in the ready-to-use assay tube that's provided, and basically just add your PBMC or whole blood and go. The samples that I stain with the MaxPAR direct immune profiling uh, assay can be fixed and frozen at minus 80 degrees. This allows the centers uh, to bank this, these samples, stain samples, and ship them when ready to, uh, to the core labs, which owns the site top, where they can now be acquired and analyzing using our past set of software if, it, if it's uh, desired. In contrast, flow cytomic samples must be normally processed immediately after staining to avoid any potential bleaching or degradation of fluorescent signal. I'm happy to share the application note on freezing of stained cells if you're interested, or you can download uh, the app from our webpage. 
So we are all facing uh, challenging times now with COVID-19 pandemic. Nobody wished it has happened, of course, but Freedime is proud and happy to be able to support COVID research with the MaxPA Direct Immunoprofiling Kit. Easy, flexible, and efficient, as I mentioned. Biosafety is also a great concern in COVID-19 research for blood collection, processing, and staining. The dry antibody format in a single tube and Fluidime's previous validated results using only 300 microliters of blood allow in this paper that Adib Haman's lab at Mount Sinai in New York to further modify and adapt the protocol to suit uh, COVID-19 monitoring research showing this recent publication. Ajib's group reveal, evaluate, sorry, evaluate the modified, evaluate modified MDPA protocols to reduce sample processing time and requirements. They show here that a 40 to 45 minute sustained workflow for holy blood of COVID-19 patients. Briefly, 30 microliters, about 30 micro, 300, sorry, 300 microliters of whole blood is added to the MDPA tube, incubated for half an hour, and fixed with the smart tube proteomic stabilizer buffer, allowing the stained blood now samples to be stored at minus 80 until ready for processing and acquired on cytosol. The authors uh, tested additional surface intracellular markers that can be later added and used with these MDPA stained cells after thawing as all the cells are already fixed. The modified protocol was then used to immunoprofiling uh, COVID-19 patient samples. Mass cytometry, immunoprofiling of COVID-19 patients with the modified MDPA protocol identified lymphopenia, increased frequencies of plasma blast and activated CD8 cells and changes in the myeloid compartment. In summary, within a 45 minute staining workflow, you can stain whole blood of COVID-19 patients and store and bank samples at minus 80 for later processing. It also provides flexibility to add custom markers to the 30 marker and deeper backbone if desired. The modified protocol reduced sample, processing time, collection, site requirements, technical skills and equipment, and does expand the ease of use of mass cytometry immune profiling. So this is another example of a very recent publication utilizing MaxPA direct immune profiling assay uh, with the addition of two functional markers, PG-1 and TIM-3. It shows change in any case. T cell, T and NK cells compartment, especially for CD8 T cells in all COVID-19 patients. So I'm now also excited to share with you that last week, Freedime has launched a series of MaxPA direct expansion panels. So there are, is a set of antibodies individ, individually in liquid format tubes that are designed to fit into the MaxPA direct immunoprofiling assay for the dry pellet antibody. They enable deeper profiling of specific immune cell subsets, phenotypes, and functions. The initial focus on immune, immune cell characteristics associated with immune response in health and disease. Researchers can use these expansion panel kits as tools to quickly customize their use of the MaxPA direct immune assay for their particular questions, or even simply use them as an inspiration for their own customization, right? So I will now provide some details on these individual expansion panels. So another way to look at the dry 30 market max spa direct immune profiling kit is to arrange them by the metals to which the, the markers are tagged or conjugate. Doing this enable you to see which metals or channels are available to add markers. In this case, 14 additional markers can be added to the assay. When markers are added to the panel, the MaxPA Passet software can also be customized to accommodate the new markers for an automated data analysis. 
So I'm just going to show one example uh, as shown here, the example of adding the myeloid and B-cell expansion panel to the MDIPA assay. So seven additional markers are added to the panel, and you still have room for seven additional markers of your interest, if you will. So here you can see the catalog number and all the five, uh, sorry, all the six different expansion panels and the markers you used for each of these expansion panels. The markers have been assembled for easy to use for further immune profile specific uh, cell populations. The antibodies are sold individually in liquid format and can be can easily be added to the MDPA tube when you're doing these things. So to conclude in the next uh, few slides, I also wanted to mention that the site of technology can be used as a truly dual system to study cell suspension or tissue sections for imaging. So an existing helio system can be upgraded at any time with the laser ablation model to create what we call the Hyperion imaging system, which allows the deep interrogation of FFP or frozen tissues at subcellular resolution while preserving the contextual information in tissue architecture and cellular morphology. You have the same technology and open channels, 135, that could be used to detect additional parameters with the Hyperion image system. And the Hyperion image system is designed to meet image uh, uh, applications now, today, and of course, well in the future. So tissue samples today can be also stained with up to 37 antibodies. You can switch back and forth between the two systems, cell suspension or imaging mode, as you like, just by removing the laser ablation module. So the Hyperion image system brings you uh, multiplex imaging with clear leadership in the field. So greater than 80 system placements around the world and over 45 peer review publications. And we have more than 100 antibodies for using frozen and FFFP tissue in our catalog. And Fluidime also sells uh, ready to go immune oncology <coughs> image mass cytometry panel kit. Sorry. The Hyperion image system is the only high, high multiplex image solution available with dual mode capability to analyze cells where there's a tissue or in solution from the same instrument. So I would like to conclude with this slide, and I hope I have convinced you of the power of mass cytometry in high-parameter single-cell biology. So innovative technology that use metal tags to label antibodies and mass spectrometry, high-resolution mass spectrometry for quantification, providing discrete signal measurement with minimal spillover that does not require compensation. The data you have, the data you get without the need of mathematical formulas to correct for signal spillover and compensation. So although fluorescent-based technology has evolved regardless of the instrument or compensation algorithms you use, the limitation of combining multiple markers in a single panel will always exist because the photochromes themselves are the limitation. So they have broad spectra emission, sensitive to fixation, photo bleach, and are impacted by autofluorescence. Unless we develop fluorochromes that emit in a single wavelength, and that's exactly what metal tags have achieved in mass cytometry with single discrete peaks, it will always be very challenging to build complex panel with fluorochromes. As I showed previously, about 65% of mass cytometry publications are using more than 30 marker antibody panels, whereas flow fluorescent flow cytometry has a very few high parameter panel publications. The number of publications speaks for itself on the limitation of using photochromes for antibody panel. In addition, applications requiring harsh fixation methods like phosphor staining or with autofluorescent cells 
are most suited for mass cytometry. Mass cytometer also offers a single detector system, normalization bids, automated instrument calibration and optimization, which has been demonstrated to provide highly reproducible data on day-to-day -day operations and across multiple site studies. So together with the MaxPAR Direct Immunoprofile Assay, which is easy to use, is flexible, can accommodate it, more than additional 14 custom markers with an automated data analysis solution has shown the power of site off in clinical studies and multi-site consortium. Furthermore, mass cytometry has opened new range of applications like barcoding and freezing stem cells that can be shipped to core labs in multi-site studies without affecting the staining quality, uh, providing more consistent and reproducible results. More importantly, many uh, of mass cytometry publications share their original FDS files with the scientific community, which can be further explored by independent groups to develop new analysis algorithms and for reproducible research. This is mainly possible because mass cytometry data do not depend on single staining controls and compensation to generate the final F-test file for analysis, which can create considerable variation when comparing data from independent sites. Quality data in fluorescent-based technology depends on single staining controls, compensation, thumb and eyes, uniqueness. All these factors need to be well controlled to generate good data quality. In mass cytometry, you only need an antibody mix to stain your cells. So I would like to finish here and again thank uh, the University of Illinois uh, Chicago Flow Cytometry Core and University of Chicago Cytometry Antibody Techno Technology Facility to uh, host us today for this webinar. So you are well served at Chicago area if you are interested in using mass cytometry. There is um, phenomenal people that will be able to uh, certainly help you and generate good quality data for mass cytometry. So I'd like now to open for Q&A and if you have any question, uh, please um, let me know. I write them on the chat box, sorry. Thank you, Vinicius. Um, that was an excellent overview of uh, mass cytometry. A lot of the, uh, the advantages of using the, uh, the technology for large panels. Uh, uh, you clearly uh, described, uh, as well as a lot of the exciting developments uh, by Fluidime in the area of the uh, new cadmium metals, uh, the ability to do live cell barcoding and, and preserve epitopes, um, as well as the expansion of the MDIPA, uh, the MaxPAR Direct uh, Immune Profiling Assay, uh, to address uh, a lot of our um, uh, COVID researchers. Uh, we've done a lot of work with a number of institutions, um, Nisi has highlighted uh, the ICANN Research Institute at Mount Sinai. Uh, we've also worked with Stanford um, and, and a number of other uh, um, sites to, uh, to develop panels and to expand uh, on the, uh, the immune profiling panel we currently have. So a lot of exciting work going on, uh, of course, driven, uh, some of it driven by uh, the COVID, uh, uh, current COVID uh, issues uh, and research focus. Um, but also uh, just um, uh, Fluidime uh, adding new capabilities and new uh, reagents to our portfolio to fully take advantage of all of the, uh, uh, the channels within the mass cytometry uh, platform. Um, and with that, um, I'd like to open up for questions. Um, if you could use the, um, uh, the questions chat box for your questions, I will read them out loud. Uh, for Vinicius to answer. Uh, if you prefer, you can raise your hand in the attendee uh, panel. There's uh, an icon uh, and I can unmute you if you prefer to ask your question live. Okay, um, our first question here is, uh, will we be getting a copy of this presentation? Uh, we can certainly make the, uh, the a PDF version of the presentation available. Um, you can contact uh, any of the uh, um, the core uh, team 
uh, from this slide here, and uh, they can get in touch with me to provide you with a presentation. I also make it available to them uh, so that they can distribute it if, if uh, they, they choose to do so. Um, another question here is, uh, let's see here, uh, one second. Uh, what are the challenges and pitfalls for this technology? Well, thank you. That's actually a great question and certainly a fair question as well. So uh, I think in general, any other technology, there will be challenges and specific protocols that do need to be taken into account when using considerations. So uh, I think, as I mentioned, mass cytometry has more than 900 publications. And uh, it's a proven technology now capable of delivering high quality results or data for all kinds of applications, as we saw, and cell types as well. So master term isn't actually like a considered anymore a risk technology that's only adopted uh, by risk takes lab, well proven robust technology. I would say that the main challenge of mass cytometry will be in one way or the other is to avoid environmental metal contamination. So uh, metal contaminations can be, for example, iodine, barium, and lead, uh, which are detecting our system. Uh, that generates, uh, uh, so generally, that doesn't impact on the analysis of your cells, but will age the instrument detector faster. So that, for that reason, we want to avoid that you have metal contamination in your prep. So usually, this is a very simple result, by avoiding using glassware, for example, uh, using autoclave to buffer, also minimize any environmental contamination. And also there are the best practices that we can uh, discuss when you decided to do your project. So another difference in mass cytometry is that uh, we don't have a force cut and side cut parameter. So we cannot actually look at the size of the cells. However, there are publications that have shown uh, like work around it if that's very important for your application. Uh, fluid dive does not necessarily, don't sell any reagents for uh, detecting the size of cells, but there are publications talk about osmium tetroxide that can be used for that. And also recently uh, in 2019, oh, sorry, in March 2020, uh, a group by Sean Bendel's lab used antibodies against molecular components on the cells that actually allow them to uh, uh, correlate with the morphology of the cells. As they point in the paper, they call uh, that mass cytometers can be seeing sample like pathologies. For example, cells are different morphology that correlate with these antibodies. So there are ways around that. The other thing in, you have to take in consideration is the instrument uh, acquires cells at a rate of 500 events per second. That's not, uh, that can be considered a low throughput or high throughput if you think about the number of parameters you can have and the million of cells you can collect. So, but anyway, about 200 to 300,000 cells it takes you about six, 10 minutes. In terms of sample prep, uh, or like, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, probably what I would consider is more, uh, the other thing in terms of sample prep is that we want to avoid uh, debris because every debris is considered event, even though you can gate out the debris and clean your sample, remove doublet, it will take longer for you to get the number of cells you want. So that's the only thing. So when you prep your cells, try to avoid debris and also fix where your cells. So you need to fix where your cells because the cells will be resuspend in hypotonic solution. So it's crucial that they are well fixed. Great. Hope that answers the question. Uh, the next question, you mentioned that frozen tissue can be stained with antibody panel. Can the tissue imaging cytop work with formal and fixed tissue? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, the imaging mass cytometry can work with both types of tissue prep. So you can have frozen tissue and uh, FFPE. So bear in mind that when you use FFPE, the, the samples are fixed and you need to do antigen retrieval. So some of the clones that work for cell suspension or for frozen tissue 
may not work with FFP. So basically, you just need to find the clones that work for you in FFP, and you can use the same uh, protocol for frozen and FFP. Yeah, and just to add that, that just uses standard uh, slides uh, and standard sectioning technique techniques. Um, next question, I, I think I can take this one. Does the University of Chicago flow or antibody core have the tissue imager, Hyperion? Um, the tissue imager is not uh, not at the either the University of Chicago or University of Chicago, Illinois core labs, um, but uh, there are ways we can enable uh, access to that technology through our internal services team. Uh, we have done work for a number of investigators at other institutions that uh, perhaps don't have the tissue imaging capabilities um, that have been very successful. So uh, we encourage you to reach out to us um, and we can, uh, we can schedule some time to discuss your project. Uh, the next question uh, from Bill Hong, I think the antibody conjugated metals are chelated with metal chelators. Is there any chance that the chelated metals leach from the chelator and then exchange with other metals and other antibodies in the same tube? So that's actually a very good question, right? So uh, in one way uh, we try, that's one of the reasons we try and avoid to prepare antibody mix uh, the day before. So if you have 10 or 15, 20 or 37 antibody panel, uh, we prefer you to make the master mix on the day of acquisition just to prevent. However, uh, the kinetics uh, and the, the, the binding strength of the metals to the chelator is very high. Uh, I think it's uh, in the waters of the avidine and strapped avidine uh, strength. So they don't fall apart very easily. And, but even though we prefer you to, to do that. And for the dry pellet format, the MaxPa Direct Immune Profiling Kit I present to you, there is no problem. And there has been a recent publication also showing that if you prepare your master mix antibodies and freeze down at minus 80, you prevent uh, any of these uh, possibilities of metal being falling off of the polymer. But the, it, it's a very strong uh, association of the chelator and the metals. Uh, next question was, uh, if there's a lot of debris, any suggestion how to get rid of the debris? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. And there are different ways uh, that we can tackle that. Uh, there are situations we can simply use, for example, histopack to remove dead cells. Uh, there are ways that, for example, if you need to digest the tissue, uh, how many times you filter after digest the tissue. Uh, there are companies that provide um, like tissue dissociation kits that has been working very well with mass cytometry. So if you if you would like to discuss more, I would, uh, I, I'm happy to uh, be on one-one -on -one, uh, conversation and see what's your project, what's your cell type, and to be able. But basically, filtration of the sample, and also if you need to enrich your sample, for example, using magnetic beads. That's also possible. That would help you to remove the debris and get your population of interest. Right. Um, I have another question here. I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, just it's asking what are what are the FFPE tissues? Uh, that's formal and fixed paraffin embedded. It's a standard method for archiving oh, yeah. tissue. Um, so um, you can certainly go into archives and section. Uh, fresh tissue is 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 what's uh, fresh sections are what are recommended for imaging mass cytometry. Um, another question here, uh, you uh, didn't mention the metal labeling kit. If labeling antibody with metals by ourselves, how is the quality of the antibody? How do you know which metal is best to conjugate with our antibody of interest? That's a very good question. And there are some, um, how to say, rules we apply to decide which metal to which antibody or target. So we have, of course, uh, we don't have a lot of variation in terms of expression or uh, intensity of each metal. It's in the order of two to three times. It's not like FIT and PE, that's uh, orders of magnitude. But we still want to assign the low expressing markers 
uh, antibodies to a, a metal that has a high intensity. So there are some rules that we apply and we can easily assist you in designing your panel and then can easily decide and talk to you and uh, uh, propose uh, markers that you would be able. So please feel free to reach out to, to us and we can arrange and talk about the antibody design pain. I will put my, the, our contact info here if you need to uh, uh, reach out to us to discuss it more specifically. Uh, we have one last question and then we're at the top of the hour. Um, it's just uh, around um, metal contamination. If some of our samples contain uh, HF or ZR metals, will these two elements have interference with the panel? Uh, sorry, Max, can you replace the metals? If, some, can, if samples contain some metals and the abbreviations are HF and ZR, uh, will these elements have interference? Okay. Yeah, so I don't know from the top of my head what is the molecular weight of this metal isotopes. So the instrument only detects uh, from 75 Daltons to 209 Daltons. So if these metals are below uh, this range, they will not be detected. For example, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, none of these uh, isotopes are detected by our system, although they're present on the cells, right? Because they are removed. So I don't know from the top of my head, but if if you look at the periodic table and this is above 75 Daltons, uh, it can be detected in our system. However, think about that. If they are 100 or if they are 121, 123, these are channels that are not used in the system. And again, there is no spillover. So if you have this metal, they will be in one channel. The only problem is the amount of contamination you have to impact the detector and the instrument. That's what we want to uh, uh, take care of, so the instrument uh, doesn't age quickly. Great, great. Thank you, Vinicius. Thank you for all of your questions. I uh, hope this uh, presentation was informative and, and a nice update uh, for where we are with the uh, uh, technology. Uh, we uh, hope that you'll reach out, uh, certainly to the, the local core labs, as well as to myself and Vinicius, uh, we're here to help, uh, whether it's uh, directing you to the right resources or helping enable uh, access to uh, technologies um, like the imaging technology or designing your own panels. Um, that's uh, uh, something we, uh, we do routinely for all of our customers, and we're happy to uh, have discussions with you as well. Uh, thanks for uh, staying a little bit over the hour, uh, and uh, we'll conclude the webcast now, and, and please have a, a great day and rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.